Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this comprehensive analysis, we delve into Rafi Farber's recent video where he dissects the intricacies of the current financial landscape as we step into 2024. Farber starts by examining data from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, particularly focusing on reverse repos and the notable spike in activity during the turn of the year. The implications of these movements extend into various financial markets, setting the stage for potential disruptions. Farber highlights the reverse repo market, emphasizing the recent increase to $829 billion from a low of $683 billion. He draws parallels to previous years, showcasing a pattern of spikes during year-end turns. The looming question is, where is this liquidity coming from, and what does it signify for the broader monetary landscape? To answer the liquidity question, Farber shifts the spotlight to the repo market, specifically the secured overnight financing market. He dissects the repo rate, noting an increase of 8 basis points since December 21st, culminating in a rate of 5.39% on December 27th. Farber suggests that the reverse repo activity is draining money from the repo market, causing a spike in overnight interest rates, a phenomenon with potential far-reaching consequences. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. I wanted to start with this chart from Fred, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, which charts all the data and stuff that we know about. Uh, we are headed into the year end turn into 2024. And when there is a year end turn, there is always some rumblings in the monetary plumbing. This once again is the reverse repos. Uh, we are down to, I think, $829 billion. Uh, we're up from six hundred eighty, a low of $683 billion last week. Why are we up? Because during year-end turns, reverse repos tend to spike higher as banks settle their books for the year. It happened here in 2022. Uh, I, I put this box here and we were up $326 billion in the last week of the year from here to this peak over here. And then in the first week of January, we fell $412 billion. It happened in 2023 also in December to December 22-22 to January 2023. We rose $504 billion to an all-time high in the reverse repos over half a trillion dollars. And then we fell $542 two weeks later. The same thing is happening now on a much smaller scale in terms of how much money is flowing into the reverse repos. And we're going to see the effect of that in a second on other plumbing markets. Uh, we're up, uh, I think now it's like $150 billion because this is from yesterday. This is from December 27th and the chart just updated to December 28th. But basically the same thing, let's say $150 billion. Uh, We're going to go up again tomorrow into the year-end turn. And in January, these reverse repos, this number is going to collapse to what number? I don't know exactly, maybe half a trillion, uh, 500 billion. We're at 800 and what did I say? 830 billion, something like that. We're going to collapse probably to somewhere in the high 500 billions, maybe even lower. That's what typically happens. And uh, from there, the rest of the monetary spare tank is going to run out in January, February, somewhere around there, it seems. And if all this liquidity is pouring into the reverse repos again now where is it coming from well i can answer that question pretty simply this is the opposite of the reverse repos this is the repo market the secured overnight financing market where banks lend to other banks at the repo rate and we can see here in this table and i'll show you the chart in a second december 21st 5.31 percent december 22nd 5.32 december 26 5.35 December 27th, 5.39. So the, the repo rate has spiked eight basis points since December 21st. This always happens going into the year end turn and volume is also jumping up again, $1.722 trillion. If we go to this chart, we see here, this is the re this is the repo rate. It spiked up on November 30th at the month end here, showing some stress. And it's spiking up again here at the year end turn. It's going to spike again tomorrow. Why is this happening? Because money is being taken out of the repo market and being put into the reverse repo facility. Those dollars that were in the repo market a few days ago are no longer there because they're being pulled into reverse repo, probably for regulatory reasons. And this is causing a spike in overnight interest rate. This is basically what happened in the repocalypse, just at a smaller scale, but we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. 
uh, as the maximum amount of money that can be put in the reverse repos are going to be stashed there for regulatory reasons. And this market is going to be a little bit starved for cash and the, and the repo rate, the SOFR rate is going to spike. And that is going to mess up the basis trades that were made that are continually made uh, on the two year treasury note. This was in last year, last week's silver report. The video transitions into a complex topic, basis trades in the bond market particularly focusing on the two-year treasury. Farber explains how hedge funds engage in basis trades involving cash bonds and futures. However, recent disruptions in the market, with cash prices exceeding futures prices, threaten the profitability of these trades. With about $800 billion a day involved in these transactions, the implications of a negative basis trade could pose significant challenges for hedge funds. Farber takes a brief detour from the intricacies of financial plumbing to explore the patterns in the gold and silver markets. He showcases triangle formations in various gold stock indices, such as XU and HUI, hinting at a potential breakout. The analysis extends to the GDX ETF, indicating an imminent resolution of a similar triangle. Farber ties this segment seamlessly to the sponsor of the report, Fortuna Silver Mines, FSM, emphasizing the potential for significant gains in gold and silver stocks. The basis trade is basically when hedge funds buy cash bonds and sell futures. So they buy the cash and they sell the futures. The futures here I see is March 2024, and they buy the December 23 spot or cash uh, in the, the market, and they net the profit, the difference between the March 2024 and the December 2023. And that is supposed to be a positive difference. But we can see here that the settlement prices, right, uh, settlement for the cash bonds for two year cash bonds are now 102.315, and the settlement for the futures is 102.312. So you can't sell the futures and buy the cash in profit. You'll lose money now because the cash is higher than the futures, which destroys the basis trade. And this, of course, is the trade that is being uh, executed at about $800 billion a day through the repo market. So you have the repo market interest rates rising, which means it costs more for these hedge funds to do this trade because the interest rates to borrow that money go higher and it's not profitable anyway. And you can see here, if we go back to Thursday, December 21st, uh, you can see here that the basis is positive, meaning the futures is more expensive than the cash. We see here the futures on December 21st, 102.282, and the December 2023 cash bonds, 102.232. So you could profit about half a cent uh, on a basis trade. Multiply it by a whole bunch of leverage and you get a few billion dollars. But that isn't happening anymore. And what's gonna happen to these hedge funds if this basis stays negative, if the difference between the futures and the cash stays negative, uh, they're going to be in trouble and they're going to have to wind down their short positions, meaning they're going to have to buy back their short futures. And that's going to cause a rise in the bond prices and a fall in two year, 10 year, whatever their short interest rates as the short term in the SOFR market rises. This all sounds pretty complicated. It just means the hedge funds are in trouble. The ones that are doing this trade about $800 billion a day. But let's continue with some warm, nice patterns in the gold and silver stock market. I'm gonna show you the same triangle in different gold stock indexes or indices. I don't know exactly how you pluralize that these days. Uh, so this triangle, this triangle in gold stocks goes back all the way to 2011. And we are coming to an apex point uh, pretty soon. We could be there any month now. Uh, and we see here that the low, uh, the, the lower trend line, it's not perfect. We went a little bit below it during the 2020 panic, but it's pretty good. This is the XAU. This is one of the oldest, uh, one of the older gold stock indexes out there. And we see here, we are coming at an apex right now, just above the 200 week moving average, but this is not the only major triangle in the gold stock market, uh, and silver stock market. So we have the triangles continue here in the Huey gold stock index. This may, more people would be familiar with. It's the same triangle. It's even better actually, because it doesn't seem to be broken at all since 2011, right? The upper trend line here is established in uh 2020 in august 2020 when uh, just after the lockdowns caused the gold and silver market to spike we broke through very very briefly during uh the 2022 i think that was the invasion of ukraine or something um maybe a little bit afterwards here is silver squeeze up here 
Farber introduces FSIM as the sponsor of the report, highlighting its distinct position outside the triangle formation seen in other gold and silver stocks. He underlines FSIM's past performance during previous bull markets, suggesting that the company may experience significant growth if the anticipated breakout in gold and silver stocks materializes. In the concluding segment, Farber shares his perspective on the impending endgame. While acknowledging the challenges ahead, he expresses a belief that silver could play a pivotal role in the restructuring of the monetary system. Farber suggests that a mental shift from dread to acceptance is crucial, envisioning a new world order after the dust settles. And the lower trend line was touched in 2018, 2019, the panic of 2020, and the low in 2022, and uh, we're, we're, we look pretty close to breaking out here. And this breakout is going to be pretty big because this triangle is pretty enormous. And I'll just quickly show you the last one here. This is in the GDX, the GDX ETF. It's not as perfect, uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. We're headed for uh, a resolution of this triangle. And that brings us to our sponsor for this week's Silver Report, which is FSM, Fortuna Silver Mines, symbol FSM which is not in a triangle unlike its gold and silver peers, which shows you that once these triangles in those major indexes, right, in the GDX, in HUI, in the XUI, once they resolve higher, and they will, uh, what happens to Fortuna? Well, we've seen when there is a, a burst in gold and silver stocks as there was in tw at the end of the gold stock bear market of the gold bear market in 2015, uh, the FSM just it, it quintupled, and here it it almost went up about ten times from bottom to top here. So we can expect something similar if those triangles break out, which I think they will. FSM itself is not in a triangle because it is a different animal. Uh, its stock movements are pretty different, as you can see here. Uh, but if you want some good exposure to the gold and silver price through miners, then. Uh, do your own due diligence and take a look at Fortuna Silver Mines. I wanted to close this week's Silver Report and the last Silver Report of 2023 uh, with an assurance that the end game is coming. It's probably not going to be as bad as your worst nightmare, but it's going to be pretty rough. I do believe it's coming this year. That's just my own personal thoughts. You can have different calculations. And I am a true believer in this sense that after it does happen and silver returns to be money, even if for a brief period, which will mean that the monetary system has collapsed, I don't think I'll be doing this anymore because we will be in a new world. So I am a true believer in that sense. And in order to get through this period until it actually happens, there has to be a switch in our heads from dread of the end game to acceptance and actually rooting for it, not for any of the negative consequences of it, but to get this over with and to get humanity back in balance again, because we are way out of line as a species on this planet for many different reasons. We can see society collapsing everywhere in the West, in the South, in the North, over here, pretty much all over the world. Things are intolerable, but you know what fixes it? Silver fixes it.